What's up guys, welcome to this video. Today we are gonna talk about architectural photography. Architecture is a very important topic for me. I spent a lot of years studying architecture and then I worked as an architect for three years. And after a while I decided to quit this job to become a photographer. Especially now I'm focusing more in architectural photography. So I'm really sure you can benefit from my knowledge. Even if you didn't study architecture before, you will uh, learn a lot from this video. You will start to understand how to see architecture, how to interpret perspective, and especially how to see architecture in a different way. But first... Mamma mia! So guys, I have to say, during these years, I've learned a lot about architecture photography, looking architecture website, reading architecture books. I also work as an uh, I also work as a renderist. So everything that I know today is thanks of my studies. But I have to say that through photography I've started to see architecture in a different way, to see things with a different perspective, to see volumes in a different light. So during this video we will go through a lot of aspects about architectural photography. We will talk about gear timing, location, weather, and above of all... We will talk about all the principles that architects and designers are used to apply when they develop a building. So the first topic that I want to talk about is gear. Gear is super important for photographers in general, but for architectural photographer, it's way more important. I don't want to focus too much about cameras. I'm sure your camera is already okay. If you don't have a camera, don't spend too much money to start this kind of job, but spend a lot of money in lenses. Lenses are super important for photographer. And to do architectural photography, there are three kinds of lenses. The first one are tilt shift lenses, and then we have prime lenses and zoom lenses. The tilt shift lenses allows you, as the word says, to tilt and shift the image so you can have a perfect straight photos instead of a perspective photos. Then, of course, we have the prime lenses and the zoom lenses. In this particular moment, I'm using a zoom lenses, especially a 24 to 70 millimeter from Tamron. Why I'm using the zoom lens? Well, when you, when I, when I, well, why I'm, ooh, mm. Why I'm using a zoom lens? Well, when you go around the city with a backpack, you don't want to carry a lot of weight. So the 24 to 70 is a perfect run and gun lens. It's a perfect range from wide lens to zoom lens and it's perfect for photography for me. With the 24 millimeters, for example, you can take a shot of an entire building and with the 70 millimeters, you can focus more on the details. But if you want to shoot interior photography, I recommend you to buy a prime lens. Maybe around 14 or 16 millimeter, 1.4, 1.8. It's super bright, perfect for interiors. Okay, but now move on and let's talk about location. Location is very important for architects. When they develop a building, they focus a lot of attention about location. They start to think about the surrounding, they start to think about the streets, the lights, the position, the orientation of the building itself. So when you have to shoot architecture, don't focus attention only on the buildings, but focus attention also on the plazas, on the trees, on the streets, on the surrounding buildings. And this is super important. You will discover a lot of nice things because maybe a building is started to be aligned with another building. And if you don't focus the attention on the surrounding, you will never understand these things. And of course, talking about location, it's super important to know when you have to shoot in a particular time of the day. It's super important to go around checking details, checking those point of view, those angles that maybe can emphasize the building. And talking about timing, let's move on on the third topic, timing and weather. Of course, timing and weather are topics super important for architectural photography. Talking about timing, you need to know that, of course, you can shoot from sunrise to sunset, even during the night. And talking about weather, there are different conditions that the building is exposed. So planning a shoot, you must know which is the best time of the day you can shoot. And of course, 
you should check forecast before to go and shoot. But sometimes it happens that you have to shoot in a specific time of the day because the clients require a specific moment to shoot this building. So you need to be super flexible and you need to be ready to shoot in every condition with a sunny day, with snow, with rain. So you need to be ready. Weather and timing also are an important tool because they introduce the repeatability. Repeatability is a tool that you can use to shoot the same building many different times during the year, during the day, to see the different aspects of the building, the different changes. Maybe you will see the differences between sunrise and sunset, or maybe between summer and winter. So the timing and the weather will change a lot the result of your photos. But now move on on the most important topic, techniques. Of course, every single photographer has a different style, but when you are shooting architectural photography, first you have to understand and know what are the principles that our architects are used to involve in the design process. So start to think about architectural principles like balance between elements, rhythm, patterns, movement, unity. Talking about balance, of course you can focus your attention on symmetry and asymmetry of a building. Or maybe you can focus more your attention on the balance between the elements. The most important thing is you use the balance to think outside of the box. Don't take the same shoot as uh, everyone, but start to move around and read the balance of the building. And of course we have the contrast topic. Contrast is super interesting. You can focus your attention on the contrast between colors, or maybe between an old and new buildings, or maybe between different styles of the same buildings, or between the two different buildings. Every architect develops a building in a different way, and when there are different styles along the city, those generate contrast. But of course you can create contrast in your photos as well, even if the building doesn't have any kind of contrast. For example, you can get a contrast between the lights and the shadows, or maybe between the colors of the building and the background. So start to think about contrast as an important tool for your photography. And then of course there is the topic of the rhythm. You can find rhythm everywhere. For example, you can see the repetition of a specific element, like a column. Or for example, in a facade, you can read the rhythm between openings and enclosures, between materials and glass. So start to search rhythm in a building, because of course, every designer, every architect developed these kind of things in their projects. But of course, rhythm can also generate a pattern. Pattern, of course, is a repetition in sequence of an element. And, for example, I have a friend in Milan, he's super talented in searching for pattern in architecture. He does a lot of pictures where he tries to achieve a specific style, where he tries to emphasize the rhythm and the pattern of the buildings, of the facade. So you can use pattern to create a specific style for your photography. And then I want to give you a couple of more advice. For example, you can frame your shot using objects or maybe other buildings, for example, in this picture, I've used two buildings plus the railing to frame the white building. And again, of course, you can capture detail of the buildings. Buildings are full of details. Architects want to see details. They spend a lot of time developing details. So if you shoot details, you are doing something also good for them. And the last tips that I can give you is to go out and shoot. Go out and start to look the building, start to move around, taking different pictures from above, from below, taking some picture with a reflection of the water, start to capture details, use your creativity, use your skills, your talent to create new images. Don't take the same images that everyone. Start to think about architecture in a different way. Even if you didn't study architecture, maybe this is even better because you start to think different things in architecture. So go out and shoot and use your creativity. Okay guys, I can talk about architecture photography for hours, but we will drive crazy together, literally. So I will end the video here. Remember, start to have a look on pictures, on magazines, on websites start to understand the principles that architects are used to use in their buildings and the most important things is go out and shoot, use your creativity, try to find out new point of views, new way to see architecture, new way to see perspectives. And I hope you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video. Mamma mia!